Infection Prevention and Control Measures, a learning module for community care facilities in 2018. The purpose of this module is to promote infection prevention and control or IPC practices for healthcare workers employed in community care settings. This module will provide information regarding routine practices used in community care facilities. This module will act as a resource for healthcare workers to identify infection outbreaks and promote appropriate actions to follow when an outbreak occurs. What is infection prevention and control? According to World Health Organization, also known as WHO, IPC is a method that aims to prevent harm caused by infection to residents and healthcare workers. Doors closing. <laughs> Closing. Going down. Yes, you're all going down with bugs. Because the man in the blue jacket sneezed and spread his germs everywhere. Yes, you're all definitely going down. Germs can live on surfaces for several hours, so to prevent the spread of germs when you cough or sneeze, catch it in a clean tissue. Bin it and kill it by washing your hands as soon as you can. Catch it, bin it, kill it. Why do we perform hand hygiene? Proper hand hygiene is the most important method to prevent the spread of any infection. Use soap and water or an alcohol-based hand rub when performing hand hygiene. Proper hand hygiene alone can reduce healthcare associated infections by 50%. When do we perform hand hygiene? Be sure to perform hand hygiene before and after contact with a resident or their environment, after using the washroom, before handling, preparing, or serving food, after cleaning or disinfecting contaminated surfaces, after exposure to body fluids, after glove removal, and if your hands will be moving from a contaminated body site to a clean body site during patient care. Hand hygiene using alcohol-based hand sanitizer versus hand hygiene using soap and water. It is important to be aware that both methods of hand hygiene are effective and appropriate for killing germs. Remember to always wash your hands using soap and water if your hands are visibly soiled. However, if your hands are not visibly soiled, it is still suggested that you wash your hands with soap and water throughout the day. It is important to address that alcohol-based hand rub may not be appropriate for facilities who house residents with alcohol dependency. In this case, use an equally effective hand sanitizer or choose the hand washing method using soap and water. Techniques for hand washing. Begin by wetting your hands and applying the available soap. Then rub your hands palm to palm. Rub the back of your hands. Then rub your palms with your fingers interlocked. Rub the back of your fingers with your fingers interlocked. Rub each thumb thoroughly. Rub the tips of your fingers in a circular motion. Then rub your wrist thoroughly. Remember to rinse your hands and turn off the taps with your elbows or a disposable towel. Remember to dry your hands well with a disposable towel. Hand washing should take between 30 and 60 seconds. Now we will watch a WHO video demonstrating the hand washing technique. Hand washing should take you about one minute. 
use a timer or count from 1 to 10 in each of the following steps. Wet hands with water and apply enough soap to cover all surfaces of the hands. Let the water run smoothly to avoid touching the tap later on. Rub hands palm to palm to obtain a good quantity of foam. Then rub right palm over the back of left hand with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub again palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked, repeating this action for each hand. Rub rotationally left thumb clasped in right palm and vice versa. To clean the tips of the fingers, rub rotationally backwards and forwards with clasped fingers of right hand in left palm and vice versa. Rinse hands thoroughly with running water. Dry hands thoroughly with a single-use towel. If the tap is not elbow operated, use this towel to turn off the tap without touching it directly. Your hands are now clean and safe. Proper technique for using alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Apply enough product and follow the 12 steps previously discussed. Be sure to cover all surfaces until hands feel dry. This should take approximately 20 seconds. The next video is another WHO video that will demonstrate the proper technique for using alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Please note that this technique is not appropriate when hands are visibly dirty or after using the toilet. In these cases, hand washing is required. Hand rubbing should take you 20 to 30 seconds. Use a timer or count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in each of the following steps. Apply a palm full of alcohol-based hand rub in a cupped hand, enough to cover all surfaces of the hands. Rub hands palm to palm, then rub right palm over the back of left hand with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub again palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked, repeating this action for each hand. Rub rotationally left thumb clasped in right palm and vice versa. Clean the tips of your fingers, rub rotationally backwards and forwards with clasped fingers of right hand in left palm and vice versa. Once dry, your hands are now clean and safe. Commonly missed areas when hand washing. Proper hand hygiene is essential when working as a healthcare worker. When proper hand hygiene is not completed, there are often areas that are missed. This image displays areas of hands that are less frequently missed, frequently missed, and most frequently missed. This image should be a visual for you to focus on the areas that you may miss when you're hand watching. By following the 12 steps and concentrating on performing proper hand hygiene, you as a healthcare professional are preventing the spread of infection. Proper hand hygiene is the best way to prevent the spread of germs. Is this statement true or false? The answer is true. Proper hand hygiene is the best routine practice to prevent the spread of germs. Which of the following statements is true about the use of alcohol-based hand rubs? Hand rubs should be used when hands are visibly soiled. Apply a large amount of product into dry palms. Rinse product off with warm water after 15 seconds of using. Or rub your hands until dry before performing another task. The answer is, rub hands until dry before performing another task. Hand hygiene, a two-person room scenario. 
You enter a two-person room and approach your first resident, Mr. Smith. You ask Mr. Smith if he needs any assistance, and he declines. You then go to resident Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams would like you to assist him with his exercises. You show Mr. Adams the exercises and help him put on his slippers. You are about to leave when Mr. Smith changes his mind and asks you to read him a pamphlet on his bedside. You get the pamphlet, read it, and return it to the table. With both residents in this room taken care of and happy, you leave the room Now, reviewing the scenario again, when should you perform hand hygiene in this scenario? After reviewing this scenario, I hope you were able to determine when you would perform hand hygiene. I have placed two capital red H's throughout the scenario to represent when hand hygiene should take place. As shown in the scenario, hand hygiene should take place before and after resident care is provided and before entering a resident's room or environment. Managing residents' environment. It is so important for healthcare workers to be aware of the germs that can accumulate over time on personal care items. Residents have a variety of personal items, just like you and I, that should be regularly cleaned to prevent the spread of infection. All items should be well labeled with the resident's name, stored, and used accordingly. The following items should be cleaned regularly. Soaps, creams, toothbrushes, denture boxes, nail files, clippers, hairbrushes, razors, bedpans, and basins. That's only a short list, but let's discuss a few. Soap. Bar soap must be kept in a clean, dry soap dish that allows the bar to drain between uses. Personal liquid body wash, or soap, is actually preferred because it's more easily stored between uses. Commonly, residents will have their own bottle of personal liquid body wash or soap, and this limits the risk of cross-contamination between residents. Toothbrushes should be changed every three months and after an illness occurs. It's also recommended that toothbrushes are kept in a sealed plastic container when not in use. Remember to label denture boxes and rinse and dry them daily. An item that we should discuss are razors. Please do not share razors. It is not an acceptable practice in healthcare because it doesn't respect the basic personal hygiene care measures and it can expose residents to the transmission of germs and infection. When using an electric razor, remember to clean it each time after using it. When using a personal disposable razor, remember to dispose of it properly. Let's move on to the quiz. Time for a quiz. Personal care supplies, for example, lotions, creams, and razors may safely be shared between residents. Is this statement true or false? The answer is false. Personal care items should not be shared between residents. Let's talk about how to deal with equipment in community care settings. Immediately clean equipment to visibly soiled, to clean and disinfect equipment between resident use, for example, a thermometer or a stethoscope. Let's say you have a resident who has been running a fever all day and you've been checking his temperature periodically throughout the day. Let's say resident number two requires a full set of vitals, which also requires using the thermometer. Unfortunately, your facility only has one thermometer available which is fine as long as you clean and disinfect the thermometer before and after using it between residents. Routinely shared items must follow a regular cleaning schedule for cleaning and disinfecting, for example, wheelchairs. 
Disposable resident care equipment should immediately be disposed of after use. Glucometers must be cleaned between each resident and before going into storage. All equipment should be dry before using or storing. Effective cleaning agents. Disinfectants effective against neurovirus and most other microbes include 7% accelerated hydrogen peroxide mixed with water, household bleach mixed with one part bleach to 10 parts water, and it's important to be aware that using household bleach may cause irritation of the respiratory system for some people. Proper use of personal protective equipment may decrease the risk of reactions to chemicals. Your facility should provide the material safety data sheets for any chemicals used in the facility. They should be kept on hand for any incidences that may occur, such as an accidental exposure. It is essential for your facilities to maintain a regular cleaning schedule. However, during an outbreak, a facility must increase the frequency in order to prevent the spread of infection. Surfaces all surfaces can become contaminated, but the risk and extent of contamination is greater for surfaces and items that are handled frequently by the hands or gloves of staff, visitors, or residents compared to the surfaces that are less frequently touched or handled. Other surfaces are required to be cleaned every other day or weekly on a regular basis and in the event of soiling, spills, or resident discharge. Frequently touched surfaces in community care facilities tend to require more frequent cleaning and disinfecting than the minimal contact surfaces. Cleaning and disinfecting should be completed daily. A reminder that equipment such as a blood pressure cuff or a thermometer does not have to be cleaned daily, but must be cleaned between resident use. Dirty laundry versus clean laundry. The most important concept of laundry in community care is maintaining adequate separation of clean and dirty laundry. The facility you're working in may have designated areas for both dirty and clean laundry, or your facility may handle both in one area. Hand hygiene must be performed before handling clean laundry and after handling dirty laundry. Laundry equipment is used and maintained according to the manufacturer. Staff should not consume food or beverages in the laundry areas. Remember to remove soil, such as stool or vomit, before placing into laundry. Washing laundry. Use the appropriate concentration of chemicals according to water temperature. If laundry is washed in a high temperature, an appropriate detergent must be used and must complete a cycle for at least 25 minutes. When using bleach for laundry, a minimal disinfection level of 100 ppm also meaning 2 mils of chlorine solution, combined with 1 liter of water, is required. Remember to always complete a full wash cycle. Let's review some safe practice tips for handling sharps. Do not recap used needles. Remember that used needles should always stay attached to a syringe because by removing it, it will increase your risk of a needle stick injury. Do not attempt to retrieve anything from a sharps container. It is not safe to carry an uncapped needle. Remember to always discard a used needle immediately after use into a sharps container. Remember that residents administering their own medication must dispose of sharps into a sharps container located in their room. What is an outbreak? An outbreak is defined as two or more people with the same infection caused by the same germs. An outbreak occurs when there's more than the expected number of residents with GI or gastrointestinal symptoms. If two cases within 48 hours or three cases within 72 hours, the Chief of Public Health Office should be notified. Staff illness is also considered when declaring an outbreak. If you are unsure if an outbreak is occurring, please call the Chief of Public Health Office for consultation.
How to detect an outbreak. It is important to understand what an outbreak is and be familiar with the symptoms of both a respiratory and a GI or gastrointestinal outbreak. Influenza illness is an example of a respiratory infection that commonly turns into an outbreak. Some of the symptoms of influenza illness are a sudden onset of cough, sore throat, body or muscle aches, a fever, of a temperature above 37.5 degrees Celsius. GI or gastrointestinal illnesses are common infections that are easily spread within community care facilities. Some common symptoms to be familiar with are nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, or noticing that more people than usual appear to be ill or have a fever. Who should be informed about an outbreak? As soon as staff believe they are experiencing an outbreak, it is important to inform the manager of the facility, the facility physician, the chief of public health office, relatives of those who are ill, and the residents. Immunizations for healthcare providers. Prior to employment, provide your supervisor with a copy of your immunization history for your employee profile. It is important to be aware that the appropriate immunizations protect staff and residents. Here is a list of the appropriate immunizations. In conclusion, infection prevention and control practices will decrease the risk of illness for you and those that you are caring for.